Okay, so this is a 2012 Fairline Squadron 50. And I sold this when she was new. The question I'm asking today is, why weren't these boats popular when they were new? Because look, it's a beautiful boat. Look how big it is, Dan, look. It's a lovely, big flybridge cruiser. But when I was selling them new, they were really difficult to sell. That's not the case now. Now, they're really easy to sell. And I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so today I'm gonna to do a full yacht tour, as normal, of this boat. But I'm also gonna tell you about this model and why we found it difficult to sell when it was new and much easier to sell when it was second hand. So I'm gonna talk you through both of those as well. I think the first thing you notice about this boat is just how big it is, look. Look how big it is. This huge platform, that's the tender launch, which I've shown you before. You, these spin over and make the dinghy sits on there. You can get a 325 on here easily. And then come look at the cockpit. Look at this cockpit. Massive cockpit. And look, great height. I'm six foot one. I don't know what that is. That's got to be seven foot. I mean, it's really, really tall. And I remember when I was selling these at the Southampton Boat Show, the nearest boat next to it was like, a, I think it was a Squadron 42. And this like just towered above it. So this boat has got real presence and it's very difficult to get it across in these videos. But actually, I'm nearly outstanding my arm here. Look, that gives you an idea of how much room is there. So this boat is fitted with twin Volvo D11 670s. Um, and the boat will do about 30, 32 knots. It's got a 250 mile nautical range. It's shaft drive, which is my favorite. Nothing to go wrong. Engines, gearboxes, cutlass bearings. Um, and it's three cabins, but the master cabin is at the bow, which I'll show you, and it's huge. The master cabin is the same size as you'd get on a, probably a 60 foot boat. So um, let's take my shoes off. Oh, I've got my um, Ted Baker Christmas socks on today, Dan. What do you think of those, son? Very nice. Are they as nice as yours? <coughs> Not very much doubt. Let's have a look here. What's this one? I think it's a rope locker. Yeah, rope locker. Got deck winches. Um, there's a crew cabin access here. This is based on the Targa 50. So um, I've done one on the Targa 50, so you can have a look. But you've got a crew cabin. Oh, is it? Here it is. How does that work then? Oh! There it is, have a little look down there. See the toilet? Down that inlet. And a bed. You know, um, it's it's not the worst crew cabin I've seen. As you know, some of those Princess S models have got um, very tight crew cabins, but lots of good space. Let's start off with the saloon then. So Aft galley. Aft galley in 2012 was quite forward thinking. Um, most boats had mid or lower galley. So to have this in 2012 was a real plus, but you had to persuade people it was the right thing to do. People are used to it now. And this kind of brings you back to why the boat was more difficult to sell. Um, because it had such forward thinking ideas, like the aft galley, like the forward master, you had to explain to people the new ideas. And if they didn't get it, they didn't buy it. And actually in 2012, I remember I had three of these in stock at one time. And all three of them in 2012, I sold for a hundred grand loss each. So that is painful, isn't it? That was really painful. So the good news is now the market's caught up and the boat is actually ahead of its time. So now these boats sell very quickly. 
this boat's just sold 550 it was sold before it even hit our website and i think if you come in you can see why i mean look at the space lots of space high low tv there lovely helm look at this handle typical fairline quality you see this handle dan so when you're at sea look, you just grab onto that handle can you see it you see look, look, at, look at the quality of it look with the stainless bolts really nicely made nice table that opens up walnut satin this is by the way um this boat's done about 500 hours um the only thing i would say in the galley is this is the fridge i know it gives you a lot of kind of glass but i think people would prefer high low yeah the big top fridge freezers oh i don't mind that zero sugar not my thing um microwave oven you've got the sink here and that is a dishwasher which I wouldn't use because you can only put about four plates and four glasses in it. You might as well have the cabin storage. So let's go and have a look at the lower helm. Okay, so this is the lower helm and it's super clean and straightforward and easy to use. You've got all the paired gauges as usual from Volvo. You've got Garmin uh, chart mm -hmm. plotter on this one um, and you've got the autopilot here and the depth, bow and stern thrusters, latest fly-by-wire, VHF, it's all really good. And there's your red light for reading your maps, which no one reads, because look, there's not even a map table. And we've got a little chat window. So it's quite a nice day here today at Essex Marina, so it's quite quiet, and there's no one about, so I can shout really loud. Can't get my head through. Oi, get the fenders in! That works. That doesn't work the best, actually, because I can't get my head through there, but it just about passes the shout window test. I love the fact it's manual. As you know, it doesn't go wrong. But I want to show you something else in this saloon which not many people know about. So let's go and have a look. So not many people know this, but some of the Squadron 50s have this secret hatch. Can you see that there? If you have a look here you've got two clips and this opens up to the flybridge now you don't know what it's for do you dan no nope. you just said to me what are you talking about what is that hatch you're going on about well now you're going to learn so when they were designing the squadron 50 stupidly fairline asked me a question they said would there be any additions you would like to the squadron 50 and I said, wouldn't it be nice? Do you remember the Squadron 58, Mr. Fairline? And he said, yes. When you used to go up that little staircase in the saloon and pass the food up to the flybridge. And they said, yes. And I said, well, wouldn't it be good to have that on the Squadron 50? So they did. They put a few boats with this hatch. And the idea was that if there's food being prepared here, you can pass it straight to the flybridge without going up the stairs. So all was good, and I thought, brilliant, they've listened to one of my ideas. It then came to the boat show where I saw the first boat, and I realised that this boat has got a lot of headroom. And even at this part here, it's got a lot of headroom. And actually, the truth is, I know this sounds crazy, but you can't actually, you can, you can't actually reach the hatch. So um, you, you, you could. If I tiptoed, I could probably just do it. But anyway... It was discontinued after a few boats. So if you've got one of these with this hatch, it was my idea. And that's a true story. Okay, so if you come downstairs, and this is where it all goes a bit topsy-turvy. But for a good reason. Because this is at the bow. And this is the forward master. Now, if you've seen one of my videos before on the Targa 50 downstairs these boats are identical so come in and if you just go over to that side and you can get an idea of how much room look is in here and you'll also remember i told you the story about one of my kids being in a cot here you have a cot in here look at this floor space look one two three four it's got to be six foot there 
And look, there's a little dressing table for the missus. Beautifully made. And I also love these kind of, I don't know what you'd call them, but they're kind of modern, trendy kind of decor. You've got all your sock shelves here. Look how many sock shelves you've got. One, two, three. I filled it right up with socks and pants. And then you've got your ensuite here, which again is massive. So this passes the floss test out in the corridor and it passes it in here as well. And this folds down so you can have more work surface. Look. And look at these big cupboards down there. Look, your missus can fill those all up with their oddments, towel rail, everything's been thought of and I'm gonna get out of, get out of this room now because the floor is freezing. It's about naught degrees today and we haven't turned the heating on. So I only got a remote control there for the air conditioning. And also notice how the wood, can you zoom in on that Dan? Just notice how the wood grain, Let's zoom, in, zoom in on that. Look, that's one piece of wood, this whole panel and that's the same wood grain, look. That's what you get when you buy something like a Fairline. Beautiful quality. Okay, so going aft, we have a day head here, which you can stick your head in on. We've got cabin two there, which has got a Jack and Jill door for there with lovely wardrobe. And then cabin three, which we're gonna go into. Cabin three, these beds will all make into doubles. And you've got cupboards everywhere. Look at these cupboards. You've got a lovely shelf, nice window, blinds, good headroom, uh, reading lights, lovely wall finishes. Really nice kind of wall finish, if you can see that. Um, just a really comfortable room. You've got a TV, wardrobe there with the mirror. Can you see the wardrobe there? You've got the wardrobe there. Lots and lots of space. Now I've stayed on um, a Targa 50, which is identical to this down below, for weeks and weeks with my family. And the kids love this space. It worked really well. And it's straightforward, solid engineering. Did you know the Fairline of this age has got hand-painted gel coat, this one's in gold, and it's hand-laid GRP. It's shaft drive, it's super simple engineering. And that's why nowadays, boats like this are in strong demand. It's an absolute cracker. Okay, so out in the corridor, outside room three, you've got a washer dryer. Stick your head in there, look. Washer dryer. And then this here is the powder cupboard where you put the powder for the washer dryer. And then if you pass me the uh, camera, here you've got all the trip switches, which just like the princesses are beautifully labeled. Look there, you've got toilets, trips, black water. I mean, you can't get better than this. This is really nicely made. Okay, so if you come at the flybridge and the fun continues up here. The radar mast, is at the back there. Got all this surround seating. By the way, this is a Bimini. That's your VHF aerial. HD radar, spotlight, nav lights. That's a radar reflector on the back. You see that? That long thing. And that's your GPS there. Table here. And then if you go over that side and then cut and zoom back this way, we've got the barbecue sink got another fridge and an ice maker now if this ice maker works i'll be gobsmacked because they normally don't work and we've got a bin there and the helm well i have got some criticism about the helm if you if you come here I must say, they, I think they could have made a bit more effort with the seat down, don't you? It's a bit flat, isn't it? They could have had some nice sculpted 
Before, right? Yeah, if you sit, sit there, you can probably and look back this way. You can probably you see. Look how boring this seat is. Look, it needs 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 some padding. But actually, the driving position. If you look over the bow, I mean that is good visibility. I mean, look how calm it is today. Look at it. By the way, this is January in Essex. I mean, look at that water. It's flat calm. Look at all those birds, Dan. They're real birds, not the Essex birds. And look at the lovely, and I also, can you see from my helm seat, if you just peek over my shoulder, you can see the bathing platform, look. So when you're parking, you can see where you're berthing as well. Now, where did that hatch come up? You know that hatch I designed? I think it comes up around here. Yeah. Oh, there it is, look. Oh, it's locked, but you pass the food up through there. I mean, it's quite a long way down. Anyway, I'll show you the engine bay. Right, and this is the engine bay. Crikey. That is heavy. Ooh. This is the engine bay. And again, look how much room it's got. There's the D11 670s. Now, if you remember, what do you think the 11 means, Dan? 11 cylinders? No, I've taught you this. 11 means 11 litre. 670 horsepower. D, I don't know what that means, diesel. 11 litres. You pass me a camera and I'll just show everyone inside. Exhaust. Got twin fuel filters. These are the water strainers. Look, you've got a water bottle there. Looks like it's off an XR3i, but that actually is the antifreeze. Ever spatcher. Halyard, that's a, that's a muffler. That's an exhaust muffler. Look at the size of it, made in England. And you've got another one over here, look. Generator. These are all the electrics, chargers, inverters. This is your trip panel. And I don't know what that is. And there's the gearboxes. Fuel, um, uh, oil filters, fuel filters, air conditioning down the back there. All in all, it's a beautifully made engine room. Uh, people like to ask how much fuel these boats use. And I would say this one is in the 125 230 litres an hour kind of category. So re, mi, low to reasonable juice consumption, but really good sea keeping. And that's what you want. Are you ready, James? No, I haven't got anything to say. <laughs> got nothing to say. Make say so. Well, I've just, no, I've just said everything about the boat. Well, i tell you what I want to talk about. Want I want to talk about why these boats were so difficult to sell then and why they're not now so this was quite an expensive boat in 2012 it was about nine hundred thousand pounds and now they're fetching about 550 but as i said to you i sold most of the ones i sold new at a loss which was really painful at the time but i must say all our customers have been really loyal over the years and as they came up to sell the boats they've given them back to us to sell which helped make up for some of the early pain. But now these boats have settled down around the 500 to 550 mark. And I think for a 50 foot boat with three cabins, shaft drive of this quality, I think, I think it's a bit of a bargain. I really think it's a bit of a bargain. And because I think it looks like a bit of a bargain, and I'm not pretending that half a million pounds is not a lot of money. I'm not stupid, I know it's a lot of money. But in, in relative terms, in the boat industry, half a million pounds these days doesn't buy you a lot, except when it comes to the Squadron 50.